work his way out at center court. Nikhil Alexander Walker on him. From near the logo, Luka! Oh my god! Luka's the biggest troll in the history of the association! Luka is the biggest troll in the history of the association! Nobody has ever behaved in this manner, man! Nobody has ever acted like this! That's the shot he makes! Folks, it's not a secret that Luka Doncic is struggling just a little bit out of the gates here. He's averaging 27 points per game. This is a guy who led the league in scoring last year at nearly 34 points per game. But worse than that, the efficiency, 36% from the field, 26% from deep, 47% true shooting. In this game against the Minnesota Timberwolves, really no different. 24 points on 10 of 27 from the field. One of eight from deep. If you go back just a couple nights ago, over a 24-hour span, this was the second night of a back-to-back, -back, so over a 24-hour stretch between the Utah Jazz game and the Minnesota Timberwolves game, Lucas scored 39 points on 49 shots, going two of 17 from three over that stretch. And yet, Luka hits a huge shot against the Timberwolves down the stretch and solidifies himself as one of the biggest trolls in the history of the sport. I even went back and I looked, and this is inarguably one of the worst four-game stretches in Luca's career up until this point, I went on basketball reference. I tried to find how many different times in Luca's career has he attempted more than 80 shots over a four game stretch, attempted over 23s over a four game stretch, and shot 37% from the field or worse, and 29% from three or worse. And it's only happened two other times once during the 2021 2022 season, and another time during his rookie year. And what makes that stat even crazier is there's a 40 point game against the Phoenix Suns where he went 12 of 25 from the field and five of 13 from deep sprinkled in there. So that just goes to show how, how slow out of the gates Luca has been just from an efficiency standpoint. But yet the Mavs are three and one, yet they're winning basketball games, yet Luca is contributing late. And it's a testament to one, how Luca can impact the game in other ways and how Luca is Never shy, even if he's shooting poorly from the field or not having a great game, from stepping up in the big moments and making plays when his team needs him. And two, a testament to how good this Mavericks team is. How fucking good Kyrie Irving is, who was tremendous in this game against the Timberwolves. I mean, just an unbelievable performance for Kyrie Irving. How good Klay Thompson has been. How good the centers have been. How good the surrounding pieces from this Mavericks team has been and how deep this roster is. And while it's been a bit of a frustrating start for Luka, I'm not too worried. Believe it or not, this past summer was probably the longest stretch in the last four to five years where Luka had not played competitive team basketball over an extended period of time. He usually always has something going on in the summer, and that was nice to see him sort of be able to rest and recover, but then he enters training camp, has a calf injury, plays no preseason games, so Luka is still sort of shaking off the rust as we start this season. And you can tell he's just not really getting to the rim at the rate that you're used to. He's only taking three and a half shots at the rim per 75 possessions. I mean, that would be far and away the lowest of his career. Meanwhile, he's taking 10.3 mid-range shots per 75 possessions. I mean, ju just for a frame of reference, his career high in that number is 8.8. .8. And he's 34% on mid-range jumpers and 26% from threes. So we're, we're waiting to see that efficiency take up. And I think as time goes on, as he gets more accustomed to game speed, you'll see him get downhill. You'll see him attack the defense. You'll see him get into the paint where he makes so many things happen. And look, some of these misses are just uncharacteristic misses. Here he gets a step on Anthony Edwards, gets to a spot off the glass, misses. That's a shot that we see Luca make, you know, eight times out of 10, it feels like. This one right here is only six minutes into the season, but I think this is a shot where Luca's trying to get going. He's trying to see some shots go down because I think mid-season Luca sees Kelton Johnson closing in, the double team coming, and he kicks this out to Quentin Grimes. Keep in mind, this is the first six minutes these two have spent on the court together. So as time goes on and Luca's just a little bit more comfortable on the floor and with the pieces around him, that's a kick out into an open three. We saw Luca hit Quentin Grimes on a couple of kickouts in this game against the Timberwolves. So it's already starting to click a little bit there. Again, this is a shot right here where a couple weeks from now, a month from now, you're going to see Luca start to hit these shots with high consistency because that's what he does. The left side of the court, step back midi over Mike Conley. Just that's a bad miss. I mean, that's front of the rim. It's so short. But I mean, it's a it's a good look for Luca. You're just waiting for it to go down. Again, another good take here from Luca. Has Colin Sex in a jail. Goes up for the floater. Misses. Frustration foul right there. 90 feet away from the basket. No excuse for it. And this leads to what has been probably one of the more frustrating things about Luca so far this season. You could tell that he's frustrated on the floor. And he's had some moments that have just made you scratch your head a little bit. And there have been a couple of frustrating sequences so far this season for Luca, where he's been upset at the officials. There was a stretch of the Jazz game where he got hit with a tactical foul. And then immediately after the next two or three possessions, he went foul grifting, foul baiting to try and get a call and try to prove a point to the refs. And well, wouldn't you know it? They 
didn't give him a call at all. And then not even 24 hours later, he gets teed up in this game against the Timberwolves. A very soft technical, mind you, but he does get teed up. And then he tries to foul, foul bait on Rudy Gobert just a few possessions later, and they don't give him the whistle. Frustrating stuff for sure for both Luka and for the fans. But as he gets more comfortable, as he sort of shakes some of that rust off, which is what he said in the postgame presser after this game, you'll start to see more of this, just beating Nas Reed to a spot, drawing the contact, and finishing. He's as good at anybody at finishing through contact. The craftiness. Once he gets 10... 15 feet away from the basket. I mean, he can do anything. Just catches you reaching right there on a little step-through move. Draws the foul. Interesting little tidbit. This is probably a little bit because Luke has been struggling from the field, but nearly a third of his shots have been assisted so far this season. That's, that is well above his career highs. Here's an assist from Kyrie. And again, just the craftiness. He gets to that spot on the court. He can beat you in so many different ways. And then once Luka gets downhill, once he puts pressure on the rim, it just forces the defense into such a compromised position. This is bad defense right here by the Minnesota Timberwolves. But Luka forces Nas Reed to commit, and that's an easy lob to Derek Lively. I mean, we've seen that so many times, and the lob has kind of been cut off a little bit for the Mavericks so far this season. And I think a big reason for that is Luka, and a little bit Kyrie too, have just, you know, they've been a little bit slow at the gate when it comes to attacking the rim. And I think as time progresses, we'll see those two start to become much more aggressive, and that will open up plays like we just saw. Or plays like this right here. This is the second time we've seen this this season already. And it's game four. Jaden McDaniels top-locking Luka. He drives that crazy over-the-head pass <laughs> the Spencer did. Just knowing where his teammates are on the court. I mean, it is an insane-looking pass, right? For a lot of guys, this is one of the crazier passes of their career. It's on their career highlight tape. I don't know. For Luka, you just see it every other game, it feels like. I mean, we're four games into the season, we've seen it twice already. It's just, he knows where his teammates are. I'm throwing this over my head. Someone's there. It's really not as spectacular when you see Luka do it a million times, but it, it's still crazy. And one of the things that I love and adore most about Luka is it doesn't matter how he's playing. It does not matter what his shooting splits are, his percentages are. When it gets down to crunch time, he wants the ball in his hands and he's going to go out and make a play. Kyrie Irving was balling out in this game against the Minnesota Timberwolves. It's a huge reason why the Mavericks did win this game in spite of Luka struggling a little bit from the field. But when the fourth quarter came around, Luka came alive and hit some... Huge shots for this team. And again, it doesn't matter how he's playing over the course of a game. When it, when it comes to crunch time, you want that guy to have the ball in his hands. Up until the fourth quarter, Luka had 13 points on 7 of 16 shooting, going 0 of 5 on threes. In the fourth quarter, he had 11 on 5 of 10 shooting, going 1 of 3 from 3. It's just tough bucket getting here, getting to the empty side of the court. Nikhil Alexander-Walker on him. That's a smaller player. A little baseline fadeaway jumper. That's cash. We love that shot. Again, Nikhil Alexander-Walker guarding him. Good defensive player, man. Really pesky perimeter defender, point of attack defender. Uses his length, but it's just too small. Lucas hitting this fadeaway on you. And even when you switch Jaden McDaniels onto him, one of the best perimeter defenders from the sport, he's just too scrawny. And Luka hits a tough fadeaway jumper from the free throw line. Kyrie Irving playing so well. You see him get doubled right there. Ball in rotation. That means Rudy Gobert switches out onto Luka Doncic, and Luka Doncic just licks his lips whenever he sees that. Good attack. Good scoop and score. And this, of course, led to <laughs> this dagger three by Luka Doncic, 32 feet away from the basket. Keep in mind, all right, he's 0 of 8 from 3 up until this shot. 0 of 8 from 3. And he hits that. He's like, that's what I fucking do. And that right there, folks, is so true. And I'm happy Luka said that because he's right and I want to talk about it. He is a cold-blooded, stone-cold killer. All right, this is what he does. We've seen it in the postseason. We've seen it in the regular season. There are not a lot of guys in the league that can do what Luka can do. And that's championship DNA. You have to have a guy like that on your roster. And there are some teams across the league that would like to pencil themselves in as contenders, as teams that can do X, Y, and Z. But the reality is, is they haven't proven that they have a killer. They have not proven that they have a guy like this on the roster. And Luca's a fucking psycho, man. You know Minnesota fans hate to see him walk into that building. It's a PTSD thing. Is there somebody in the league who has a fear factor quite like that? I mean, there, is there? Like, would Phoenix fans watch that guy walk into the building? There's a murmur. There's like a, oh, shit. Here we go. Luca hits his first step back three. It's, oh, shit. It's coming again. Timberwolves fans see that guy 50 seconds left on the game clock attempt a step back three 35 feet away from the basket. He hasn't hit a three all game. They know that shit's going in. There's this feeling in the, in the room. This, uh-oh, that's in, that's in the basket. Wouldn't you know what it is? I saw this hilarious tweet. <laughs> Somebody giving a thumbs down to Luca. We as a society haven't talked enough about how hilarious a thumbs down is, right? The middle finger is one thing, but you know, middle finger is like, yeah, fuck you too, buddy. A thumbs down is like mean spirited. You know, just, nah. There's something about it that's just, I like, and I'm, I'm here to make it more of a thing. I mean, we, we got to see it from this angle right here. This is this on the court baseline angle. 
you know, just a disgusting, hilarious shot, all things considered, obviously. But take a look at Clay Thompson. Look at him talking shit. Yeah, yeah. So I fucking do. Look at Clay Thompson. Cheesing in the background. He can't believe it. He can't believe this is his life. And back to Luca being the biggest troll in the NBA, man. Uh, he got me this time. He got me with this injury scare. I thought for sure this one was serious. Holding the back of his knee, immediately going to the locker room. This one looked... Luca. Luca can sort of milk it a little bit. And I do think in the postseason last year, he was playing through injuries. He would not have been playing through in the regular season. That was clear and obvious to anyone who watched the Mavericks all season. But he, he, he can milk it a little bit. Uh, that's true. And thankfully he's okay because this bucket that he got right here after being injured is one of the most hilarious ones of his career. I mean, first and foremost, Kyrie Irving making that pass is so funny. Luca just attempting the shot without leaving the ground. <laughs> also hilarious. Again, it's hilarious because he ended up being okay. Right. And not that this was funny for any other reason. Anyways, it's been a slow start for Luca efficiency wise, but hopefully this dagger three against the Minnesota Timberwolves, him being able to talk shit to the crowd, the crowd talking shit to him. You know, it's interesting. The Phoenix Suns game, I, I mentioned that game kind of felt like a preseason game at times with, with just how the intensity was lacking a little bit. The Suns fans have learned their lesson, I think. Uh, the crowd doesn't seem as boo, fuck you, Luca, as they were in the past. The Timberwolves fans are still, they're still learning that on the fly. And uh, I think him going to Minneapolis, them talking shit to him, and him being able to return the favor, it's going to get him going in the right direction. <laughs> uh, what a hilarious player, man. How can you not love the guy?